Chala is also, Chala is one of my favorite clients and she is also one of our sponsors. And um, Chala has a pretty incredible business and an awesome background. So why don't we start there by you telling everybody a little bit about your company and your background. I would first like to say how good you look. Oh, thank you. And because <laughs> you look a little bit more like my hair, so I'm really <laughs> appreciating that. <laughs> Anything that makes me look more like you is good. Um, so <laughs> um, I own a company called um, The Repositioning Expert. It is a uh, division of Coach Tactics. After 20 years of working for giant companies like Pepsi, Pizza Hut, and Frito-Lay in marketing, I left five years ago and um, ha had my own consulting company, and it's been wonderful. It's really been wonderful. And, you know, I was on TV this morning. Oh, I gave a shout out. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, good morning, Arizona. And uh, we might have some guests from there. That would be awesome. Exactly. Did you bump into uh, Senator McCain? Yes, too? I did. And very cool. he's looking very uh, tired. Oh, but, uh, yeah. No wonder. I know, I know. So, uh, you know, the, the segment was about how to be self employed. And I was able to share some of the things that you taught me about how to. Um, you know, get beyond the, the grunt of what every entrepreneur knows and does and all these mistakes that they make and how to get above that. Yeah, so, so one of the things uh, was that Chala was working 100% with small business yeah. owners, although you were, cr you were doing amazing. It was just like exhausting yeah. Yeah, yeah. doing that. Um, and then here, I'll pull up some of your bullets. Um, but I think, you know, one of the things that was interesting about Chala is that she was working with small business owners and yet she had this amazing corporate background, had worked with companies like Pepsi and Frito-Lay and had actually been a part of some of their amazing rebranding efforts and the way that they would get products out onto the shelves. And she was actually part of the teams that would look at if a product wasn't selling, why? Why wasn't the product selling? So just some amazing background. Um, but when Chella first approached me, she said, look, Angelique, I'm working with small business owners, but it's, it's a grind. I'm traveling nonstop. It's so much effort. And then I get that client in, and it's a small, you know, it's a dollar figure, but they don't keep buying from me. Right, they're done. Yeah, I teach them. I reposition them, and bye-bye. But you know, the, one yeah. of the most expensive things for us is to get the client to begin with, right? right? So once you get a client, you want that client to stay with you for a long time. Like you want to win the client and you want to continue to add to your book of business. A lot of times for, for those of you who've been working with small business owners, you know it's kind of like once they get satisfied, it's like on to the next you know, expert or, or whatever it is. Um, but the other big thing for me is when I looked at Chala's background, I just was like, oh my gosh, she really needs to monetize and leverage this incredible corporate background. Um, and just the other thing, I guess, was that you had hit the sort of the time money wall on it. Yeah, and you know, I was already charging five figure, multiple five figures for my programs, and I really, I didn't work, I don't work with a lot of clients, and I work very deeply with them, but you helped me dare to dream to double in this year, and I'm well on track to do that, and I, like, I was already multiple six figures, I already make, like, four times what I used to make at my corporate job, so I'm like, how can I double that? I work out of my living room, I have a seven-year-old, you know, like, I, mm -hmm. I didn't even think it was possible, and then by doing the whole corporate thing, it was. So one of the first things um, that we did with Chala, uh, we did a strategy day, and um, one of the very first things actually that we did, and I think this is really important, so I want to emphasize this, I'm a big believer that you should never turn off a revenue stream in your business until you get another revenue stream going. I'm a huge believer of that. I watch that happen for people all the time. They have revenue coming in from somewhere and they just kind of reach like an exhaustion point or a fed up point and they want to go in a new direction. So they totally turn off that faucet and then they don't turn on the other one first. And the problem with that is money is attracted to money and success is attracted to success and growth takes money. Like you have to be able to invest to go fly to be on TV or um, you know do certain things in your business. So you always want to have a stream of revenue to fund your business. Mm -hmm. So one of the first things I actually did with Chala is we actually looked at creating an immediate cash injection in her existing business. 
Right. We wanted her to make money right then and there. Yeah, and um, Angelique convinced me that there was money in that list, although I had never seen it, <laughs> and uh, to, to that date. And so she gave me the formula, and I implemented that with my tiny list. I have like 1,500. And um, it turned into, I think it was 20,000 uh, within the first two months, which, r which helped me. I mean, it's not the biggest money I've made uh, in my career by any means, but it was certainly good enough to keep me going because I had mm -hmm. kind of t uh, turned off the other stuff that I had been doing. So this was just really passive, if yeah. you think about it. Well, and you don't want no money coming in, right? right. So you want to make sure you've got that bridge to keep you going. It is, you, it's very hard to problem solve when you are in panic mode. Yeah. Right? If any of you have ever been in panic mode or you've lost that big client or you're not sure where the revenue is coming from, our brain, and actually Dr. Cynthia could probably talk to this better than I can, but when you are in a place of panic, your body, your physiological reaction to that changes. And the last thing your body is thinking is, oh, we need to be creative right now. Your body goes into like this fight or flight mode. And it's not like, oh, we should totally problem solve and be creative and think our way out of this, right? So you, you, it sucks though, because here you are, you're stressed, you're anxious about what's gonna happen in your business. And then you have this reaction to it. And then next thing you know, you can't find your way out of a wet paper bag. You just, you can't see options. You can't see solutions. So I'm just a big believer. You keep the revenue going and you immediately start with just low hanging fruit. Just immediately get more out of whatever you're doing. Give yourself a little cushion as you turn that battleship around in the bathtub. Um, the other thing we did is actually we changed, uh, we added some new branding to your yeah, business. Yeah, so it, it went into the repositioning expert, which really tells people what I do because that's what I do. I take a business, they're usually pretty generic, and then we you know, pinpoint them into a one very specific facet of a pain point to be a specialist in and pick a really great industry target. And then you know, um, those are all the stories I'm going to tell tomorrow mm -hmm. in the breakout. It, it catapults you into growth, and so mm -hmm. we did that for me. Mm -hmm. We did. It's hard to do it for yourself, though. So this it's was really interesting. Hard, yeah. So Charles, like, I can't yeah. believe you're doing this for me. Yeah. But you can't do it for yourself. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I shared with Chala was that, number one, she was all about repositioning. And number two, all of her background and all of her, her examples uh, from her corporate past to build that credibility with decision makers came out of consumer products and food and beverage. So all of her background, it was all consumer products, it was all food and beverage. She ha you're in Toronto. Yep. Um, Toronto is like the food and beverage industry mecca. So in Toronto, it's all F&B companies and they're growing rapidly and Toronto is actually investing money to attract more food and beverage companies into Toronto. So they're spending money it's a growing industry, it's in her backyard, and it overlaps with her background. So when Phil and I were showing you that chart of not just trying to be all over the place and focus in, it was like all the dots connected. Now it's interesting though, because I think a lot of people resist it, and I know you told me I was crazy. <laughs> She's like, you're crazy, Angelique. There were a lot of times I said that. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, um, but, you have to narrow in. You can't be all over the place. And that's the one thing that Chala and I absolutely agree yeah, on is yeah. getting focused, right? For sure. um, and the other thing was really looking at taking people through sort of this rocket ship journey of getting the proximity, being relevant to them, credibility, and, and then moving them into a place of buying from you. So what was the proximity strategy that you used? I mean, I, I was already using executive roundtables, and my coach at the time, David Nagel, mm -hmm. was also your coach, and said, you know, go sponsor Angelique's, you know, um, event in Baltimore. Yeah, and that was live was event mastery. Live event mastery, and mm -hmm. I wandered into a room and um, just heard you talk about this. And then the next week, I was speaking somewhere, so I did an executive roundtable, and I closed fifty thousand dollars of business. And she wasn't even my coach. So that really told me, that, okay, this woman kind of knows what she's talking about, I think. <laughs> because I've, be, I've been to a lot of uh, conferences and I've, been to, I've had a lot of coaches and I really respect your corporate background. We speak the same language, I, you get it. And so I used executive roundtables. I, I went nuts. So every morning I'd get up and I would hit the phones hard. 
uh, I had very targeted lists and I, you know, I just did the phoning and I recruited them into three executive roundtables and that was my first six figure month in like all my life. So, amazing. you know, that I, I never ever would have imagined. Oops, let me go back for a second. So 20,000 from her existing list, then closed a $50,000 client and then had her first ever six figure month, yeah. which is which was pretty amazing. awesome. Yeah. So congratulations. Really. So that's, that's really, if you think about, if you think about how do businesses become seven figure businesses, that's what you have to do. You just have to have a lot of six figure months. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll do it. <laughs> You know, it's funny, we're laughing, but it is funny how we often want to get to seven figures yeah. and we don't really break it down to the fact that we have to have six figure months to create a seven figure business or, you know, and, and so on and, and up from there. It, yeah. I, I absolutely love, my favorite part about Chala is she was a sponsor at an event. She wasn't even in sitting there taking notes. She had come in <laughs> to like just kind of see what was going on, <laughs> heard me talking about it and was like, huh, I'm gonna do that. And then walked out and <laughs> implemented it, took action a week later. Yeah. Now yeah. she used the executive round table strategy first with small business owners. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. we moved it over right. to going after to, to the, the corporate. corporate. And, um, but it was just awesome. She called me, she's like, I've been doing your executive round table. I'm like, you never learned my executive round. She's <laughs> like, no, remember I stopped in the, I went in the room while you were talking about it when I was a sponsor. But that's what it takes. It takes people doing, it takes people just implement the damn implementing. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, yeah. implement, implement the, the damn thing she's telling me. <laughs> right? Just implement Implemented, it. yeah, exactly. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I am super excited for you, and Thank I have you. no doubt you'll keep having six-figure <laughs> months. Yes, So, Because yes. she is an action taker. When she was here yeah. last, well, um, you know, it was last year. Yeah. It was here. Yeah. You yep. signed up with Clint. Yeah, that's uh, right. Clint yeah. Arthur, who's going to be here later. That's right. Um, and now she's been on, like, every major network. She's out there all the time. This woman, the difference between her and like 90% of people, she, she's like, oh, okay, that's what I'm supposed to do. Boom, done, just well, done. And it, I just want to say, it doesn't mean that I'm not scared. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean that my conditioning doesn't want to stop me and the voices inside my head don't say like, you're going to die. But <laughs> um, I, I, I feel like I've paid all this money and I'm gonna, bl or th there's a reason why that woman is standing there and you know, all these people are here. Th there's some credibility and I've invested the time to, to listen to you and to be here. I'm gonna do it. And it, you know, just boggles the mind when people just, are, or I just think they can't. But you know, if you just push yourself through that fear, that is the thing that uh, working with Angelique gave me the most is the confidence to actually write down 50 instead of what I normally write, which is 25, mm. for the same thing, but to a different audience in a different room. Awesome, you're awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.